You know, it's funny that you mentioned the tools that you can't get that you might want to build. And um, try as I may, I really can't see the need for a panther router in the hobby workshop. And that's, I think, the target audience for us both. So that, that machine is kind of a production. I always said that. I mean, even when you were talking about building it before, like when you first built it, you mentioned it to me and I said that, isn't that like a production machine? Like, why would a hobbyist want that particular thing? I mean, it'd be a different thing if you're making like 100 chairs or something like that, but nobody's doing that kind of thing. But I guess the same thing holds true to something like a box joint jig. Like, why would most people, like most hobbyists need a box joint jig? And that I can kind of understand because if you want to um, build something that has box joints, it's almost better to have the jig uh, on hand to do that because by the time you, you know, set something up, the, the traditional type one, and then get that dialed in, it almost equals <laughs> the amount of time it would take to build at least my box joint jig. Anyway, I don't know about yours. Well, actually, I do know about yours. It takes substantially longer to build that one. But in the time it takes to dial in the traditional type one, you can basically get mine done. It will cost a little bit more, but then you have it for the next time. Now, as far as the table saw goes and getting it built as good as, say, a store-bought machine, that is a challenge, but that's why I want to do it. Like um, the jointer, you built your jointer with that um, parallelogram uh, lift and lower mechanism for the infeed table. And I did mine differently. I used an inclined plane. And I think the inclined plane is a lot easier to do, can be a lot more accurate over time because there's really no wearing Parts. I mean, it's it's um, bearing on a full piece of plywood there. So it would be uh, a lot easier to build, a lot easier to um, set up, I guess you could say. But I still found that a real challenge to do. And the level of accuracy that you need for a jointer is quite a lot higher, I think, than you would need for the typical table saw. Uh, with the typical table saw, all you needed to do is to be adjustable in the places that you need the adjustment. You need the blade parallel to the miter slots. You need the fence parallel to the miter slots as well. You need the blade to sit at 90 or stand up at 90 degrees to the table. As long as all those things are individually adjustable, then I don't see a problem with accuracy. It's basically the same thing for any store-bought tool. You would have to dial in the accuracy after you buy it. And the only difference is that, okay, something that's made out of metal, something that's made, let's say, high quality, will usually hold those settings better than something that's homemade. But if you take the time to simplify the design, very much like I did with my jointer, in feed table, then you're taking away a lot of the variables that will, you know, change over time. My goal has always been to make things less mechanical whenever possible and take away moving parts rather than adding them. And then once you add another moving part, then you're adding in the wear factors or the breakage factors or the precision factors. Like I spent a lot of time working on the design for my upcoming table saw and that was my specific goal to take away things that will reduce the accuracy and the precision and improve the reliability of it overall, given the uh, constraints of making it mostly from wood.